Oh, look at that. Oh, hello there. Jacob of the Trail, they call me. Jerusalem Parks and Recreations Department. I'm a, uh, well, my official title is gardener. And this is Neremiah of the Pinking Shears. He's the undergardener. Good afternoon. But quite honestly, I mean, we have to do everything around here. I mean, we have to deal with litter. I mean, on a public feast day, you wouldn't believe the amount of pomegranate peel and old wineskins we have to pick up. Oi, there's a bin over there. Yeah, see it? It's the green thing with Pete Palestine tidy on it. They, they never listen, never do they? Listen. They, they never, listen. ever listen. I mean, in the summer, we have to collect the money for the tennis courts. That's right. And, uh, oh, he's in charge of the deck chairs, of deck course. Deck chairs. And next year, apparently, apparently, the council are thinking of putting in a crazy golf course. Now, frankly, I think that is going to lower the tone. But the Romans have insisted. Very keen on their entertainments, they are. In Rome, they like to watch lots of chariots going round and round in circles, don't they? Yes, I believe they do, but uh, we've been spared that intellectual extravaganza. And lions. Lions, yes, they don't. like their lions in Rome, do well, they? Yes, they do, yes. Apparently, uh, actually, their latest idea for public spectacle is to feed religious minority groups to the lions. But uh, they haven't found the right minority group yet, so I've heard. Of course, uh, they do public executions all the time, all the time. They did one just the other day, actually, uh, three fellows it was. Don't, uh, don't really like to talk about it, actually, because, um, well, one of them was arrested here, you see, in the garden. In the garden, here. Yeah. Not that it was anything to do with us, No, it had nothing well, no, to do with us. Nothing to do with us. No, no, nothing. no, no. But, uh, well, if you'd seen what's been happening since, you'd, uh, well, you'd understand how I feel. Let me start from the beginning. Uh, this, uh, this is the Garden of Gethsemane. It used to be just an olive grove here, you know. That's yeah. right, it did. It's nice and quiet here, you see. We're a bit away from the town. Kidron Valley's in the way, but we're nice and easy to get to, you know. You, you either go out through Sheepgate... If you're not very tall. <laughs> or uh, you go out the city wall and straight through Solomon's Porch. And people come here for, for peace and quiet, you know, to escape from the noise and the smell. Sorry, I went to the gold market this morning. What, just visiting or as merchandise? Visiting? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, of course, I wouldn't claim that the Garden of Gethsemane is exactly the most, um, botanical garden in the world. You see, if truth be told, the problem for any Judean gardener is always the same. The soil. Poor. Very poor. It is poor, you know. It's rather stony. Stony. Best thing is, best thing is, Try and give it a bit of compost every November and March. That's right. But you see, there, there usually isn't enough goat dung left, you see. No, Pontius Pilate, he nicks it all to put on his roses, doesn't he? He does. Mm. He does, which means that we are rather restricted uh, in our range of plants, you see. I mean, fig trees. Yeah, we can grow them. Oh, yes. Vines. Oh, yes. Yes. But you try raising a decent crop of daffs in this lot. I mean, you need a pickaxe just to get the bulbs in. Now, watch out, you can't say daffs anymore, can you? Oh, no, I forgot, can't say daffs, no, not since the Romans came. You know, I've got to use the Latin names now. Yeah. It's not a daff, it's a narcissus, pseudo-narcissus, amaradiliciae, isn't it? Whatever, mm. yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? We've had to give up labelling the plants. Some of the new labels were so big they were blocking the light. Huge. There's also, of course, the problem of watering. Now, the fact is, it doesn't rain that much around here. We've had a horsepipe ban since 453 BC. We have. Mm. Of course, Pontius Pilate, he had an aqueduct built, but your Romans have got different priorities. I mean, you know what they're like with their baths. It's not right, really, It's not is it? right. I mean, old Pilate and his missus, they go around smelling fresh as a daisy. Meanwhile, all the actual daisies are brown and shriveled. Anyway, look, I mustn't ramble, which uh, I'm inclined to do if you get me on to gardening, you see. It's, it's my whole life. It's my whole life. I do come from a long line of gardeners. Oop, he's onto his family. Oh, yes, there was Kabar, who begat Isabar, who begat Isaac. We'll be here for hours now. Who begat Azabar, who begat Abraham, who begat... Donald. Your Uncle Donald. No, it wasn't Donald, was it? It was Azabar and your Uncle... Uh, Auntie oh, Deirdre. Uncle oh, Donald. anyway, whatever. You see, the point is, all gardeners. My ancestors, all gardeners. And my old dad said I should be proud of that. After all, he said... It's the oldest profession there is. Adam and Eve themselves were gardeners. Cool. They're not especially good ones, either. I mean, if they'd spent less time eating forbidden fruit and more time... Mulching? Mulching. 
Mulching's the word I was looking for. Mulching and and uh, and uh, digging. Uh, Digging. Digging's another good one. Yeah, mulching and digging. Mulching then and the digging. world might not be in such a mess. Right. I mean, I'm not really a religious type, you know, myself, but, uh, well, times are strange. Strange things going on round here. Very strange, aren't they? They are. Very strange. It's, uh, it's those, those public executions that I, I told you about. But, uh, look, I'll tell you what, let's go somewhere a bit quieter. It's a touchy sort of subject around these parts. Is pomegranate a forbidden fruit? Here we are. It's a bit quieter over here. We can't be overheard. Can't what? Be over... So you have to be a bit careful what you say. Even here, outside the city, the whole place is a bit... tense. Tense? See, you've got to understand that the political situation round here is what you might call, uh Poor. Very poor. Very poor, yeah. Always have been. What with Babylonians and Syrians and Israelites and wars and rumours of wars. Still, I'm sure it'll all sort itself out in the end. In a couple of thousand years' time, I'm sure Palestine will be the most stable, peaceful place on the planet. But for the moment, it's all a bit delicate. So I'll keep my voice down if it's all right with you. Now, um, I was telling you about my family. Were they gardeners? All gardeners, yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. my great, 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 great great-grandfather actually worked over the Euphrates at the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. It used to be one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, not much of it left now, of course. It's, uh, it's all been scaled down. No, it's just the Hanging Basket of Babylon. I don't know. Seven wonders of the world. Seven blunders of the world, I call them. Right. I mean, there was that Colossus of Rhodes. That's right. Fell in the sea. Fell in and the, the sea. Egyptians wasted all that time on them daft pyramids. Daft. I mean, I ask you, right, Fancy spending 150 years building some pharaoh's tomb. I mean, the pharaoh been dead a century before he even got buried. I wouldn't want my body lying about for 100 years just so a bunch of builders can pile up some overtime. See, the old Egyptians, right, the old Egyptians, they was very big on this uh, afterlife business. Oh, will you look at that? Those people over there haven't put away their deck chairs. Oh, dear old Lord. Anyway, you know, uh, waking up in the next world, we don't really know that there is anything after we die. They never come back and tell us. No one's actually definitely been resurrected. Well, they hadn't been until the other day. I'm sorry if I sound confused. Um, I am, actually. I'll try and explain, uh, I'll try and explain a bit better. You couldn't explain it any worse. Poor, very poor. Yeah, thank you. Now look. You remember I said um, about the three blokes that, that got executed the other day? Yeah? Well, one of them was, uh, well, it was this religious type, you know, uh, preacher. You know. But a very good one. A very good one. An influential, oh, I should say so. I mean, most parks have got a sign somewhere saying, do not walk on the grass. Well, we've had to put one up that says, do not walk on the water. I mean, you know, what, there's so many false prophets with all these copycat miracles. I mean, I, I don't like to get involved, usually, but I did pick up the gist of some of this bloke's stuff because, well, he was very strong on gardening metaphors, you see. He told this parable about someone scattering seed, you see, and, and some of it fell on the path and uh, some of it fell on stony ground. What did I tell you earlier? The soil is very poor. Very poor. Very poor, yeah, we know. You see? See, that's our kind of language. Our kind of language. And he was very good at that. Talking to the man in the street. No matter how daft they were. I spoke to him. Exactly. In fact, he was so good at it that all the priests and Pharisees and such like decided they didn't like him one bit. You see? He was going to the people straight over their heads, cutting out the middleman, as it were. What really got up their noses was that he claimed to be, uh, be God's son or, or something. Now, I am no theologian, right? I mean, I, I find it hard to wrap my head around that one, so uh, I'll just keep out, you know, I, I, I don't like to get involved. But anyway, um, he had these followers. He had these followers, and uh, from what I can gather, one of them betrayed him, right here in the garden. Came up and kissed him, and that was the signal. The one he kissed was the one they wanted. Now, I thought it was odd, 
that they needed a signal. I mean, after all, this chap's been going about preaching and teaching and doing miracles around this region for the last three or four years. So, well, you'd have thought they'd have recognised him immediately. But I suppose they might not, from a verbal description. I mean, if you'd said, arrest the one with the long hair, sandals and a beard. Be stuck. They all look like that. Anyway, um, I took him off. All his followers got very upset, pretended they didn't even know him. Pontius Pilate was a bit confused. I, I don't think he knew what crime the chap was supposed to have done, you know, in case of wrongful arrest. He tried to let him go, but, uh, well, the crowd weren't having any of it. Wanted blood, they did. So, uh, well, they, um, they, well, they crucified him. You know. They were all laughing at him, they were spitting at him, calling him names. Horrible way to go. Then he died. And straight away, it went dark. The veil of the temple was rent in twain. There was lightning. The earth shook and trembled. If that doesn't indicate his conviction was unsafe, I don't know what does. Certainly the Romans thought so. Apparently there was some big He-Man centurion standing there and he said, truly this man had been the son of God. And he's not even Jewish. He's Roman and you know what their religion's like. They got so many different deities, you need a phone directory to help you pray. I didn't know what to make of it all myself. Like I say, I, I don't like to get involved. The wonderful thing about gardening is uh, it teaches you patience. You take a corn, right, or, or a tuber, in the spring, suddenly comes up, all green and strong. Death and rebirth. Something of that sort seems to have been going on around here. It's this bloke they put on the cross. They buried him properly, over that way, not far. There was a new tomb there, you know. And then, on the, uh, on the third day it was, they found he was empty again. He'd gone. Well, rumours started flying about. See, this religious chap, this leader, he'd always said it would happen. He said he'd rise again after three days. Just like Jonah spent three days in the whale. But I mean, I mean, I mean, there's a difference, right? There is a difference between three days in a huge aquatic mammal and three days actually dead. I mean, three days in a whale, okay, that'll probably get you the front page of the sun. But this, I mean, well, this is start every newspaper there is. I mean, they've all got the story. Of course, they've all got different versions. I mean, no one knows what to believe. Some people say the body was stolen. Other people, the ones who followed this leader, they say he was resurrected. I don't know how they can sort it out. If you ask me, they're going to have to start their own religion. But then, I'm just a gardener, right? I, I really don't want to get involved. You can't get out that way. I've locked the gate. Cool. Very cool.